Well, TBI are three letters that may be foreign to you. Traumatic brain injury. It's something that is different in every single person who has dealt with it. Chad Klosterman is a survivor of TBI, and Dancy is with Chad and his wife to talk more about successfully moving past an injury like this. Well, it's, uh, it's always been said that we don't know what the next minute brings us. And um, there are two people here today that are going to talk uh, to us about that and have a very specific story to share. Chad and Emily Klosterman of St. Mary's, I'm so glad to see you. Great to be well, here. Yes, I'm sure you are. And um, I want to start by um, telling you that Chad is a traumatic brain injury survivor. That's a, a lot of words there. Um, <laughs> But you had an accident that changed your life in the year 2000. It was almost 16 years ago to yes. the day. Um, and you um, want to share your story because I think that all of us can learn something from it. And Emily, I'm sure that yes. you have your side of it too that um, will be impactful. But Chad, can you tell us, take us back 25, when you were 25 years old um, and what that day was like? Well, it was just a normal Friday. Uh, my, I had a guy, I, you know, okay, I lived in South Carolina. I lived on an island, and I wanted a boat or a jet ski, obviously, not a four-wheeler, which I brought from Ohio. And it was Friday night, movie night, and after dinner, I had a friend over to check the four-wheeler out, make sure it was running fine. Uh, my wife was like, Chad, come in, it's movie night. So I, one more ride, just one more ride. And I took off, I went down, and I never came back. And what happened was when I went down, they had, in South Carolina, they had the roads still in sand mode, or sand mode. They were still sand travelways because mm -hmm. they built houses before roads. And I went down and they had drainage culverts in one lane of traffic on the road. It was about 10 o'clock at night. I was coming back, clipped my right rear tire on one of the culverts, which spun the back end around, rolled over broke about everything on the left side of my body, and my head went into a concrete culvert, uh, giving me a basal skull fracture and eight cracked vertebrae and T4 region in my spine. So needless to say, that left me in a coma for three months. Three months. Three months, 87 days. And what is the injury today that still lingers? Oh, it's the traumatic brain injury. It's, it, it's something that you deal with every day. I mean, with me, and, and that's one thing about traumatic brain injuries is people can have a traumatic brain injury, but it affects everybody differently. I, I know guys that's had just about the exact same injury, but their problems are totally different than mine. With me, it's a lot of short-term memory issues. Okay. And so where others I know have had the same problem, they can remember everything. Mm -hmm. That's not me. But... I do what I have to do to make sure I can remember things. Definitely. Uh, association is a big one for me. But it's having that determination to do what I have to to make me appear as normal as possible because I don't like getting bad looks that we get every now and again. I'm sure. Emily, your wife joins you. And um, Emily, you have gone through a lot of this, a lot of the recovery and um, just the, the new processing of our world um, with Chad. And um, can you define the challenge in, in, in this time of your life as well? well? I think the biggest challenge for Chad <coughs> is he's hard on himself. And we're always our own worst critics. Right. And he wants to prove to himself and to others that he can and will overcome and accomplish whatever he sets out to do. Mm -hmm. And so every once in a while I have to calm him down and say, who are you trying to prove yourself to? Uh. Who are you doing this for? Is this for God? Is this for you? Is this for pride? Yeah. And I think once in a while he has to stop and just step back and say okay maybe I am doing this for pride instead of for God yes. and I need to stop and ask what's God's plan here yeah that's that's uh, great that he has you yeah. to remind him you also have um, a child yes and um, what has that been like through the whole parenting process and I think having our son has um, and having him grow up around somebody who 
has a disability has made him just such a generous heart. Oh, I bet. And he sees everyone as a gift from God. And he himself has an amazing faith formation. Yeah. And um, he's very compassionate and giving and kind. And I have to say that if, if it weren't for Chad being my husband, I probably wouldn't be who I am today. Oh. And I don't think our son would be the young man that he's becoming without yeah. having Chad as, as his father. Yeah. Chad, did you know the Lord when uh, you had your accident? I, I'm a, I was Catholic my whole life. Okay. And when, I mean, even when I was in the military, I went to church every Sunday. That was, you know, that was just the thing. And then once I got out and I started to get into the real world, I guess you might say, I, I kind of started to leave it alone a little bit. Yeah. And it wasn't a high priority on my list. And that was wrong because in the three months I lived in South Carolina, I never went to church once. And I kind of forgot about God, but God never forgot about me. Right. And after my accident, I started to think about all these things. And it just started to get more in depth with me that I may have been out of God's eyes, or God's been out of my eyes, but I've never been out of His. Right. And ever since then, I've put so much more attention on God that I, I, I feel that part of me making it to where I am today is because of God. And so I'm giving him all the credit because I shouldn't be alive. But some people might get angry and they may say, you know, why, why did you allow this happen to me? And why am I now sometimes struggling and missing things um, unlike my friends? All the time. Yeah. I have such an issue with that because I like, my wife was saying, I want to do more. I, I always want to do what I was told that I can't do. I, it, and it started off, this is the funny thing, it started off with tying my own shoes. I got sick and tired of tying my own shoes. And my grandmother goes, well, why don't you get Velcro shoes? Your grandfather has them. I said, that's why. Grandpa's got, I'm not in the age category for Velcro <laughs> shoes. So, so you're a bullhead in other words, I'm right? Extremely. <laughs> And so I learned to tie my own shoes. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where if there's a way with my determination and perseverance and God's help, I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's just the way it's always been. Because yeah. it Definitely. Well, there's so much more to talk with you both about, and we are running out of time. But I know that you are offering support to other people. You have a website. Yes. Okay. And, and where can they find you? Uh, it is at tbiguyspeaks.webs.com. Okay. And it's either that or they can just go with my original email address, kman0308 at yahoo.com and put something in the title that would express, you know, a question or whatnot about, you know, what it's like or any questions they have. I mean, because it's a lot more than just TBI. It's about God being on your side and knowing that he's on your side. That's and sometimes we forget that, drowning ourselves in the sorrow and pity that we have because of what we're going through. But with God's help, we'll always get through it can't say it better myself so thank you both for being with us and um, I appreciate you sharing your story and, and being brave enough to come out and and um, reveal yourself so thank you very much and we wish you only the very best thank you for having me right. back to you